This painting is called Like a Des Pot here. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a big name. It actually, I'm using the name because we don't really have an equivalent in English because it comes from the uh, Koine Greek for um, housekeeper or housemaster. But it's actually the, the dude that's in control of the whole thing in the house, that orders the slaves around. So more than just the housekeeper, not the lord of the manor though, somebody who looked after the treasures of somebody else. So this painting is a big beech myrtle. Now, it's in Victoria, uh, and it's a place where I discovered, as I was looking for a tree to paint, which normally happens, uh, and I have a feeling that nobody's ever really walked into this little bit of rainforest before. We painted quite a while ago in 1999, and I'm still doing rainforests today. They're quite hard to paint, but I'm thoroughly enjoying the, the journey. Now, let me explain the size of this first. I'm painting from on location, but from across a valley, a small valley, a rivulet basically, or gully, um, but the creek sort of flows in down the bottom down here. And I brought a little helper to come and help me. <laughs> I call him Barbecue Man, although he looks a little bit and, 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 and a bit like ScoMo at the moment, for those who uh, aren't Australian, that's our Prime Minister. Um, so if I put this guy in the place where he would be standing, and the size of him, there we are, I call him Barbecue Man, I'll cut the barbecue out, but he'd be standing about there. Now these plants here, are around about that knee high height, can be a little bit bigger. This is a, quite a big tree fern, it's off to the side, but if you think about how big this tree is then, that gives you a sense of scale. Now I'm talking about a beech myrtle. They are a lot smaller trees traditionally than the gum trees. So it's an amazing tree. Then I want to tell you something else about this tree, this tree is that this is the main trunk, but what are these levels and layers? Now, a myrtle is a really amazing tree because it grows from its own root stock. So it spreads out and puts out sprouts from its roots that feed into these roots down below. The reason it does that is because if the tree falls over, it's already got a tree ready to take over the canopy in space. In a rainforest, light is critical and trees compete for that light. And once they own that space, they become the master of that space. So this house master is in control of the canopy. If it falls over, one of these will inherit the space. So we think back now. These are rootstock of the current tree. Well, actually, it's all the one tree because way back somewhere, this is the root from perhaps the original tree, maybe earlier than that. So this tree fell over, its rootstock carried up, and that's the next layer, and that's the next layer, and that's the next layer, and that's the last layer. So there's about five layers of tree in this tree. So as my barbecue man stands at the trunks, he's not even at the beginning of the growth of the current tree. Now, what's really interesting is that this tree here, I think as myrtles, although they're in rainforests, they are old trees to get to that age. So that tree could well be a thousand years old, but if it's already built on five layers of what looks like rather large trees, this tree could actually be five to 10,000 years old. That's phenomenal. So as we think about what that means, 2,000 years ago, there's this guy running around in Palestine called Jesus, and he, he said, um, he was talking to his disciples, and everyone, he said, everyone who's a studier of the law of the kingdom of God is like a housekeeper who brings out their treasures old and new. So, Let's think about this. These are the treasures old, visible for people to see. And these are the treasures new.
the offspring, the new ones, the ones that have the hope of the future waiting to happen. And he's talking here about building uh, the new on the foundations of the old. But there's another really interesting reference going on here. See, go back to when the tree was maybe this high, there was a dude called Hezekiah who was king of Israel at the time. And he foolishly, he won a big battle against the, the um, Babylonians and, and he thought, I'm going to show off. And so he invited the people from around and he showed off the treasury of Israel. He showed them into the rich parts of the palaces and the, and the temple and he was quite proud. The problem was, was that he showed his treasures off both the old ones and the new ones and they decided that hmm, worth defeating this. And so not very long after he was defeated and Jerusalem was burnt to the ground and pulled apart and all the treasures were taken away. So that's where, for me, this painting is really important. Because, see, the treasures of this tree are plain for everybody to see. Now, if you drive down this road, many of these old trees, whether they're gums or whether they're myrtles or anything else, have all got that telltale axe marks in them as the axe was climbed up to cut them out. And so all the big trees in this valley were logged out by the early, early axe men and settlers before the era of chainsaws. And all the old treasures are gone. This tree somehow, and I don't know how, was never logged. And it stays the same, a treasure old. But because it was sort of hidden a little bit from the road, and it wasn't very far from the road, mind you, it got protected. So be very careful about this site that I don't invite people in to say, oh, here's the tree, simply because, hey, I don't want that place trampled down and destroyed. I painted five paintings in that little bit of forest, just within 50 metres of each of them. So here, this treasure's old and new is really important. It gives us a lesson in life. Not, not to be boastful, show off too much. So this tree, huge that is. Take this away. There you go, barbecue man, your job is done. So here we go. This amazing tree still exists today. And it's very, very old. Just one little side thing. I was really worried about this tree and the rest of the trees in this little bit of forest because the Marysville fires in 2009 went right through there. Fortunately, I got back to see this forest a little bit after that. And the fire missed this little valley and this part of the, the forest by about two kilometres, maybe a kilometre and a half. So it was very close. So fortunately, it didn't burn in that either and it's still alive. As far as I'm aware today, you never know, could have been blown over by now, but if it did blow over, it's new, would take over, and it would still be there. Genetically, this is identical to that. Isn't that incredible? 